Today I want to talk to you guys about the new firmware for the DJI Inspire 2 that released just over a month ago. Now when it came out I actually did a video on it talking to you guys about what has changed and my thoughts on this new firmware because I was actually given early access. Since then one or two people do appear to be having problems. There's been a few comments aimed at both me and DJI and I just wanted to explore these and explain what the current situation is with this if you're an Inspire 2 user. Now just before I get into it if you're new to the channel please do consider hitting that subscribe button I also do a live stream every Sunday night on my live channel as well Mads live tech tips and tutorials there's a link to that in the description of this video too and it'd be fantastic to see you guys there as well anyway let's get on with this video and take a closer look at what this is all about now just to put myself up in the corner as well now the new film we released on the what was the date this actually came out on the 9th of the 9th so it's just over a month ago and it is version 1.02.0500. Now, as I said in my original video, which I will link to in the description of this one as well, I actually had early access to this firmware and did a bit of testing on it as well. A couple of the changes in this firmware, the big one is that they've added support for the 960 gig SSD. They've optimized the gimbal to reduce roll and things, issues like that. They've optimized the gimbal to reduce drift. They've optimized the battery power management system as well. And this is sort of the big one which I want to talk about in this video. Now, this firmware aligned the Inspire 2 firmware with the battery firmware for the M200 as well. Some time ago on the release of the update for the M200, DJI introduced some fail-safe options to protect the aircraft from failing in flight. This never actually came to the Inspire 2 initially, and you ended up then having a situation where your TB. 50s would work in one aircraft or the other but when you tried to swap between them it ended up having to change the firmware all the time this new firmware vision 0500 aligned all of that and it brought some of those new safety features to the inspire 2 as well and the big one is that the fixed occasion issue with the battery level displayed was higher than the actual battery level and optimized power management during flight power is dynamically adjusted according to the battery temperature and remaining battery power for improving battery safety usage now this latter one is the one that seems to have caused one or two issues. Now, just to be clear, when I tested this firmware, I had no problems at all. I've put quite a bit of airtime on this firmware. I've not seen any issues with the battery management kicking in, in both windy conditions, normal conditions. For me, I've not had a problem at all. However, one or two people have, and they've posted both on RC groups, as well as DJI's forum as well. And they have had a situation where they're saying that their aircraft basically wouldn't fly. And it was reduced the power so much so that they weren't actually able to fly the aircraft home very easily. And there was the potential for the aircraft to be lost. Now, this is very similar to what you used to get on the Mavic Pro when the object avoidance system would pick up sunlight in front of it. It just refused to fly forward. And it's that kind of behavior. And one or two people appear to have had this happen to them. Now, this is part of that new battery management system DJI have introduced with this firmware. For me, though, I have never seen this happen. I have never had it happen to me either. So it's a hard one for me to say. And when I actually said I've tested this firmware and I've had no problems, at the end of the day, that was my own testing and that was also the testing of the people I tested it with as part of a small group. None of us had any problems with this. We were all very careful to put this through some testing to try this new feature. Now I will say that I was not uncomfortable but certainly a little concerned when I saw this was being added because if you, those of you who remember the Inspire 1 DJI introduced a change that prevented the low voltage cutoff kicking in in flight the result of that though was the aircraft would also take all the power away from you as well and this again is a very very similar feature or behavior that DJI have introduced and again I was a little not sure where this one will end up but again in my testing it worked 
absolutely fine. Now, further to that, there has also been some comments on the update with regards to the improved gimbal performance that other people haven't had that. Now, for me, I can again only tell you what I have experienced and my gimbal on my Inspire 2 was all over the place. My X4S as well as my X5S, it would drift everywhere. If I actually angled the aircraft on the side like that, the gimbal would tilt. It would, if I yawed the aircraft all the way around, it would actually go off horizon and then it would level back up very slowly again when you stop the aircraft. And I really did have that lazy gimbal behavior. And I also had that aircraft or gimbal yawing by itself in flight. And I've actually shared some video on that in the other uh, video I did showing you that the aircraft would actually rotate itself. Again, for me, this 05 firmware fixed all of those issues. They've all completely gone away. My Inspire 2 is as good as it's ever been on this firmware. But again, I do want to stress, this is my experience. And it isn't the first time we have seen people have different experiences with firmware releases. Sometimes it's quite odd to see this happen, but there is clear evidence in DJI's past of identical hardware behaving differently with identical firmware. And none of us really fully understand why that happens, but you can line up three aircraft all the same and they will all behave a little bit differently as well. Now, there has been a few comments on this that perhaps I have lied or I've intentionally not said that this new feature is dangerous and things like this. Honestly, that is not the case. The, the reality of this situation is my testing, I had no problems. The people I tested it with had no problems either. Now, this issue that this gentleman is talking about here, there has been a very, very small number of posts on it. There hasn't been that many. I've only literally seen three or four in total. I've had no comments on my own website or YouTube about people having this. I've seen very little on Facebook. There seems to be, you know, a handful of people who have experienced this. Now, it is hard to say, is this an issue with this firmware? Perhaps their batteries are heading towards end of life. It is difficult to say, but it is clear for some people they are definitely having a problem. So what I'm going to say is this, with regards to this new firmware, if you are not sure, do not update right now. Hold back and let's see what happens. The last thing I want is for anyone to feel that their aircraft isn't as good as it was before because of a recommendation I have given. The information that I provided was honestly based on my own and the group I was involved with testing. I was a little unsure about adding this feature and I'm sure I said that in my other video. I haven't gone back and looked, but I am pretty sure that I did say it in that video as well. Again, feeling like history repeating itself with the Inspire 1 when DJI introduced the LVC feature um, or LVC mitigation feature, I should say. But overall, my experience of this has been fine, but I am going to say do not update. And the biggest reason I'm going to say that is you can't downgrade at the moment. There is no option to do so. Now, I am exploring some of the software that's out there, Drone Hacks, NLD, and a couple of the others to see if there could be a solution for people um, to do so. Um, but I haven't really dug too deeply into that. I ha I've had a look at drone hacks and there isn't anything at the moment. DJI do not officially have a downgrade path for this firmware at the moment either. Um, so that is it for this video. It was just to say that basically. Um, here and now, I would say avoid unless you have a specific reason to do so. If you are someone who have experienced these issues, please do put it in the comments of this video please do let me know. I am always interested in taking user feedback. I'm always trying to provide you guys with the best information I possibly can. Whilst I still stand by everything I said in that original video that this firmware has been absolutely solid for me and the people I know using it, the fact that one or two people have had issues, I'm going to now throw caution to the, uh, put a bit of caution out there, not throw caution to the wind, but put a, put a, a word of caution out there and I would say hold back a second and let's wait and see if DJI bring out an optimization for it, or is this how it's going to be? You know, if your aircraft is behaving fine now and you have no issues, I would 100% stay where you are a minute because this 
battery issue never manifested itself on the Inspire 2. It was very much limited to the M200 in the sense of in flight. Yes, on the ground it was possible to have the problem with the battery actually over showing a state of charge, but I've not heard of an Inspire 2 that actually failed as a result of it. Now, a couple of other things that was mentioned on this was around no improvement in aircraft stability and the Inspire 2 really isn't stable enough to be used as a professional platform. There's a post on here. Let me just find it. Um, this one here. I will just share this one with you guys. We've had enough bugs in the last three years. Where is it? Um, free, uh, frequent compass calibrations. Not something I've really experienced. Gimbal, crow, and yeep. Uh, Gimbal, your creep. I, I've not had that since. Horizon level, again, for me, fixed. Um, hovering stability improved. With regards to the hovering stability specifically, um, the Inspire 2 is not like the smaller aircraft. It will move around in a large box. One to two meter box, in my experience. No one really fully understands why the, such a big aircraft isn't as stable as it could be, but the Inspire 1 was exactly the same. In fact, the Inspire 1 was much, much worse. It would not stay still at all. The Inspire 2 is better, but it's certainly not perfect. My thoughts are it's due to that arm design with the arms actually never being fully straight and a couple of other things like that. But it is a big bird, but it certainly isn't as stable as, say, a Mavic 2 Pro and all of those smaller aircraft. They are years ahead of the Inspire 2 in that respect. Whether we will actually see an Inspire 3, I don't know to resolve this. We'll have to see. But other people have said there are still some issues and we know there are problems around the Cinecore. I'm, I'm not going to pretend that there aren't. There really are issues around the licensing at times as well, that it just stops working. People can't get it to record properly. They get problems and things like that. Um, but we're going to have to see. But, you know, there are clearly people who are still very unhappy with their Inspire 2. Mine overall is fairly solid now with this new firmware, as I have already said several times. But, um, you know, it is interesting to see some of the comments made. Anyway, that's it for this video. Just a quick update. Here and now, the latest firmware, unless you have a very specific reason to do so, do not update. Wait and see what happens. If you have updated already and you're not experiencing problems, don't worry about it. All I would say is make sure, though, you are always flying fully charged batteries and freshly fully charged batteries as well fully charged within the last 24 hours if your battery has entered self-discharge you are asking for trouble and you will get yourself into trouble as well but as long as your batteries are fully charged like me i've experienced no problems with it at all now that's it for this one if there are any updates on it i will release them out there in the near future um please do as i've said in the comments put your feedback on this let me know what happens let me know what you guys are experiencing is this something that's limited to one or two people or is it a much wider issue that i'm not seeing anyway as i've said if you've liked this content please do consider hitting that subscribe button i'll be live today because it's sunday 10 p.m uk 5 p.m eastern time on my second channel and there's a link to that in the description of this video as well 